Good morning, welcome to this week's IGTV. Today I'm talking about co-parenting your teen with your ex. That enormously frustrating person who is constantly driving you crazy, trying to undermine you, sabotage you, make your entire life difficult, not to mention your teens, and you're ready to, okay, well, whatever you're ready to do. If that sounds familiar, you're in the right place. My name is Allie Payne. I am a certified life coach, certified relationship systems coach. I've been working with parents and teens to help end the painful disconnection, stressful silences, and emotional blowups to create relationships built on trust and respect. I am not a divorced parent and I did not come from divorce. However, my husband did, as well as many of my best friends, and I have walked a few very best friends through this situation and I've recently learned some new information that um, is very powerful, I believe, in helping parents to get through a very difficult time. I'm, I'm not here to tell you it's going to be easy and I'm not here to tell you like, you know, some magical quick pill that's going to fix everything because, well, that's not possible, nor is it what I do, but thank you for the compliment. All right, so I have a lot of notes, so I'm just going to jump in. Sorry. <laughs> I want to thank you for joining me. If you're here on Instagram, give me a follow. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. Girls gotta, you know, gotta know that you're my, my tribe, my people. Okay. So there's probably few things that are more, first of all, already painful when you've gone through a divorce or separation. So there's that whole emotional thing, which is not an easy thing. Um, and, I, and I have no judgment about that whatsoever. I just want to acknowledge that that process in itself of separation and um, divorce is already emotionally painful. So when you add on top of that, your ex, your co-parent, who feels like they are literally trying to undermine you at every step, they're trying to sabotage you, um, the price on your teenager is becoming higher and higher, that emotional strain is is like Herculean. That's a lot. It's a lot for you to handle. It's a lot for you to have on your shoulders. And it's a lot that you can't necessarily change about them. So I want you to know right now that I see you. That I see the fight that you are putting in to try and create the best life possible for your teenager to try and be the best parent that you know how to be for your teenager, in spite of someone who feels like they're spiting you <laughs> and, and the amount of emotional energy that takes. So I think that's really important, again, to say that this is not easy. Um, I am not specifically here to, I'm just gonna turn this light up a little bit. I am not here specifically to address narcissistic parenting because that person is not here. You see, it's, it's you are here with me right now. You are listening to this right now. So I'm only talking to you. You cannot control or fix your ex, period. Nor can I, because again, they're not here. And if they don't want to be part of the solution, that's their choice. They have a choice. So you're here now. So I can give you these tips and you can take them or leave them. But if you thought you were coming here so I could tell you how to miraculously change the mind of your ex or teach them the wrongs of their ways or have them see how right you are, um, or how much they're hurting your teen, I, I'm sorry. I have walked this path with a very close friend and um, it's extremely painful to watch your children be traumatized um, by their, your, their co-parent, their, their, their parent, um, their parent's behavior, um, and have to, you know, within the law and co-parenting agreements, get psychologists involved and have assessments done to, within the law, change co-parenting agreements until the children are old enough to make legal decisions about not seeing 
their parent or limiting their visitation with a certain parent. So I'm not going to go into any of that because I cannot possibly know the law in every single place of every viewer here. Um, I, I encourage you to use whatever avenues and access you have possible if you feel like that's you. But please work within the law or the limitations of that as much as possible so that you end up getting the outcome that you want instead of undoing what was possible because you did something else. So that's all I will say. All right. Um, okay. Uh, moving on. Are you ready? Okay. So um, when you see your teenager struggling each time they come back from having been at your exes, at their other parent, okay, it is so heartbreaking and frustrating when you see your teenager come back, um, whatever the alternate times are, when you see them come back and they are troubled or more defensive and angry or sad or quiet and there's nothing you can do about that, that is extremely challenging. And what I'm hoping today is to give you the tips to alleviate that is as much as possible, okay? Um, I know it's, I, I know that it's awful. Okay. So let's jump in. So this is a perspective that I've learned recently that I want to share that I think, uh, that really opened my eyes. Now I know my husband has told me this in a lot of ways, but I don't think I quite heard him in the way that I heard this new perspective. Um, I know that you are right about your way of parenting um, and you're right about how right you are and you are right about how wrong your ex is. What a crappy parent they are or you know how these certain things that they do are completely sabotaging you or completely sabotaging your teen's mental health. I know that you're right about how right you are and you're right about how wrong they are, okay? That's cool, I get that. There is more to this though, because the more you are right about what a, the, how right your parenting is and how wrong your ex is, the more you are polarizing your two homes. You're polarizing them, which is only creating a harder, more difficult experience for your teenager. And because it's so different. And yes, it, this is exactly how this can feel when you're married. Mm -hmm. This is how it can feel when you're married. I totally agree. So yes, you could use these tips if you were married. <laughs> yes, good question. Um, just because you are right about how you want to parent and you truly believe your ex or perhaps your partner is wrong about how they parent, the more that you dig into that, the more polarized you become and the more confusing and more difficult this becomes for your teenager, okay? What you are doing is compensating. You are polarizing to compensate for what you disagree with what your ex is doing. You're not just being the world's best parent. You have probably taken it to a whole other level, like it's an Olympic event now, to be the best parent because you're compensating for what you believe is your ex being the world's worst parent. That compensation is polarization and it is not workable because your teen is the collateral damage in the middle. Your teen is the collateral damage in the compensation of you being right about what your style of, of parenting and wrong and making it how wrong your ex is about their style. Your teen is the collateral damage in the middle. And I know you probably just said to me, so I'm just supposed to let it go then? I mean, you have not met my ex and you have no idea what a trashy parent they are. And if you did know, you would never say that to me. Maybe, maybe. 
I do believe you're a great parent. I really do because you're here and you're listening to this. And that to me makes you a parent who's caring and courageous and at least curious about different perspectives and, and learning new skills and tips. So I already believe you're a good parent. I don't need you to prove it to me. I don't think your teenager needs you to prove it to them either, actually. I'm just saying. So you don't need to let your parenting style go. You don't need to just be like, oh, okay, well then I'll be like exactly like him. And like, I have to, what I'm saying to you is be authentic in what feels right for you as a parent. But if you are parenting from the mental mindset that you need to compensate for how wrong or crappy your ex is, it's not going to work. That's not actually parenting in a way that's probably authentic for you. That's probably parenting in a way that has gone beyond what's authentic to you because you're trying to compensate or be right. Okay. Um, then there's also compensating in a different way. There's compensating where you become an inauthentic version or parent version of yourself. If let's say your ex is really mean, like really, really nasty and mean. And because you love and care about your teenager, you are now compensating by being a pushover or like overly giving and uh, because overly kind and, and a pushover because you feel so bad for the way your teen gets treated at their ex's house. That's compensating. It's not helpful. Or perhaps let's say your ex has no rules, like no rules. I mean, it's like Disney over there all the time. It's anything goes, no rules whatsoever. So you are now super harsh with boundaries and rules because I mean, they have to learn them from somewhere, right? Yes, they do. But if you go over that edge of inauthenticity, you further polarize and you're compensating. It doesn't work. Or let's say your, um, your ex um, does nothing with your, with your kids, like with your teenagers, like just doesn't ever do anything with them. You know, um, you know, they're like, they're taken care of, but they don't, there's, they don't do anything with them. So now you are trying to compensate by doing everything with them, by being like the everything parent, because you feel badly or guilty. Ooh, the guilt card is a good one guilty about the kind of parenting or relationship they do or don't have with your ex. Compensating or the mentality behind compensating will undermine you and the amazing parent you are, but more importantly, it will undermine the relationship that you want with your teenager. So stop, stop compensating. Here's the teenage perspective that I learned a few days ago, and I'm going to tell you it was eye-opening for me. I heard a woman talking about her experience growing up in um, uh, two, two different homes. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna say, like separated or divorced parents. She said it was like living in a no-win situation because I'm going to go with a polarized example for right now, which was partly her example, okay? It was like being living in Russia in one week, okay? A communist country, cold, Russia. And the next week she was in the Bahamas. And then the next week she was in Russia and then she was in Bahamas and then she was in Russia and she was in the Bahamas. And she said, it was exhausting, emotionally and mentally exhausting to go from Russia where there's one language, there's a cold climate, there's very different customs in a communist country to the Bahamas where it's warm, the climate is different, the clothing is different, very different language, very different customs. To go from the Bahamas to Russia week after week and be expected 
to change on a dime from being Bahamian to being Russian overnight or the moment that the other parent came to pick them up. They were supposed to just like change cultures quickly. And she said it was, it was emotionally exhausting and near impossible. And what was worse was if she forgot something at one of the other's houses, then the other parent was always upset because it was out of their way to like bring that other thing there. Or um, if they, you know, forgot something in a backpack or if they wanted the clothes or something to wear that was at the other's house. It's like she said, imagine if you and I did that. We went from Russia to Bahamas every week. Okay, just imagine for a second. So it would make sense for us to not keep everything in one suitcase, right? It would make sense for us to leave things in the Bahamas and then leave things in um, Russia and just take like a carry on back and forth, right? And so um, they, she, she said like, I could never plan right. I could never plan right for what was gonna happen that next week. And sure enough, I would leave something in the Bahamas that I needed in Russia. And so, and then it was on me. Then all of a sudden I was an irresponsible teenager because I forgot certain things, but I was going back and forth every week and I could never get it right. I also, she said, this is, I'm speaking as if I'm her. Um, Yeah, Taylor, it is the, the assimilation time, the adjustment time. There's no, she said she was never allowed an assimilation period. It was just expected. She would just be Russian or Bohemian, Bahamian, sorry, but she would never, there was no allowance for that polar, living in a polarized um, parenting situation. There was no assimilation time and, and she couldn't ever get it right. So that part was exhausting. Trying to, then, then, um, then there's, if, if your teenager prefers one culture over the other, which I promise you they will, please try not and take that personally. Your teenager, like every other human being, has a personality style, love languages, attachment style. So they're automatically going to assimilate to one parenting culture more than they are another parenting culture. That doesn't mean you're a bad parent or they're a bad kid. That's normal human dynamics. So can we just not take that as personally, okay? Um, She also said that eventually it got so exhausting that she was never allowed to find who she was which was hard enough in a developing teenage brain when their self-identity, which requires self in, self-reflection, and they only develop a, uh, an adult brain mature version of self-reflection during adolescence when their brain is growing and developing. So all new hardware, well, not all new, but a lot of new hardware and a lot of new software going in up there. And she said that figuring out who she was became even more challenging the more polarized the parenting situation because the parents were more focused on who was the better parent and who was the crappy parent, who was right about their parenting style and who was wrong about their parenting style. And it left her in the middle with very little room to figure out who she was, which in case you're wondering is already hard enough as a teenager. Because she had, it was like she had to, she had to spend more energy assimilating to the two different cultures. Why? Because it is normal and natural in our brains to seek love and approval from our parent or or primary caregivers even when they are abusive. That is psychologically proven. It is normal and natural to seek love and approval 
from a primary caregiver, even if you think they are the world's worst parent. So here she is going between Russia and the Bahamas, doing her best to assimilate, to seek love and approval. And in doing so, couldn't figure out who she was. So she acted out more. She acted out because she was trying to be the best child in a polarized situation and there was no winning. There was no winning because what if who she was was more Bahamian? That's just who she was and that is a natural normal thing. But then she had to go live in Russia every week. But she wanted love and approval from Russia, but she wasn't getting it. She was always told she was wrong and not doing it right and not meeting expectations because she wasn't Russian enough. And then she'd go to Bahamas and she felt like, ah. Oh. And so um, then that parent made up that, that, that the teenager loved them more. Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm not saying this is easy. And I'm not saying you ever have to agree with the way that your ex parents. You can think it is textbook awful. Psychologically proven warfare. And I believe you. That doesn't mean that being right about your way or compensating by going even further into right or compensating by going to more toward your ex, which is inauthentic for you, is helpful. So here's what, here's what I want to say. Um, so I need to make another point before I go to my last point. Please, please do not make derogatory comments about your teenager's parent, your, their other parent, your ex. When you make derogatory comments about your teenager's other parent, you are shaming and condemning who your teenager is. Because that other parent is biologically and genetically part of them as a human. So I understand if that co-parent, that ex of yours is under your skin and you're like, Ooh, I want to just, <laughs> I get it. I 100% I, I believe you. But you make those comments away from your teenager, not around your teenager. Ever. Because that is still their parent. And when they go to that country, they're still expected to be that way and love on that parent in the best way that they can. So by you making any derogatory comments about their other parent, you are degrading your relationship with your teenager, even if you feel you are the better parent and doing psychologically the better, more scientifically proven, better ways of parenting. You are undermining your relationship and you are dehumanizing, in a way, your teenager because that other parent is a part of who they are. So you can still express your frustration. You can still express, you know, that you're, you're feeling frustrated and you're not sure how to make something, but you keep, your, you keep your dissonance with your ex away from your teenager. I don't care if you wanna be besties with your teen and I don't care if you talk about everything so you're gonna share, no. 100% no, don't do it. And here's the catch. If your teenager has clued in to the fact that your ex, their other parent, is maybe not the best parent, and your teenager says to you, mom or dad or whatever, oh my gosh, they suck at this. They constantly are like, whatever, whatever. You do not get on board with that. You simply empathize and validate your teenager. And you say, ah, oh, honey, I'm sorry that that happened. 
that that would be really hard to to hear your mom or your dad say that. I'm sorry about that. What how how else did that feel? Or what would you like them to have said to you? This isn't about you when your teenager says talk smack about your ex. That is not the moment that they are unconsciously putting a medal around your neck because now you're the world's best parent. It's not a teeter-totter where if your ex screws up, now you're better. Let it go. Your teenager is going to have grievances with both of you. Welcome to being a parent. Hmm? You don't know that your teenager doesn't also now smack talk you with your ex. You don't know that. Maybe that's how they're trying to create what Dr. Brené Brown has proven is called common enemy intimacy. Don't be part of that. Common enemy intimacy is trying to create inauthentic relational bonds by hating on the same group of people or the same behavior or the same something. You don't know that your teenager is not trying to create common enemy intimacy with you which is an inauthentic bond just to seek love and approval from you. You don't know that. So when your teenager has a grievance with your ex or their other parent, validate and empathize. But don't try and get on the ride to be closer or to create intimacy. Stop it. Get on the ride if you're going to and just say, huh, interesting ride. What does it feel like for you to have your parents say that? I'm sorry that that happened. What did you want them to say? I would really, and if you're ballsy enough, ask your teenager, hey, listen, will you let me know if you're feeling hurt by something I'm saying to you? Because I'm sure I do sometimes and I don't always know it. So I want to let you know that I want to know if I say things that hurt you. That doesn't make you a better parent, so don't put on your noble hat. But at least you're saying to your teenager, hey, listen, you might be going to your other, to, to my ex, to your other house and talking smack about me. And I know that. That's okay. I want to let you know that I want to hear about it. In this house, I want you to know you can say those things. You don't have to wait till you leave the house. Okay? So empathize and validate. But do not start saying derogatory things about their other parent. To try and create inauthentic relationship bonds through common enemy intimacy. Stop it. Empathize and validate. And you're like, Ali, this is all good, but you've never met my ex. They're terrible. They're awful to my teenager and they screw them up and they're all blah, blah. Yeah, okay, I get it. But the minute that you start dogging their ex, you are degrading and dehumanizing them and who inherently who they are because that person is a part of them. And don't you think for a second that your teenager's not already thinking Dear God, what if I turn out like them? Because I know that genetically they're a part of me. Don't, you don't need to add to that. <laughs> you don't need to add to that fear. That's not necessary. Okay? So here's my final point. If your teen is acting out, and teenagers do, if you've watched any of my videos, teenagers act out, like period. Period. Not just teenagers in a co-parenting situation. Not just teenagers in a really polarized co-parenting situation. What I want to get across today is I want you to be the parent in a way that feels authentic for you to find, do the work, to find the messy ground where you can feel respected and your teenager can feel respected. And that is that takes a lot of conversation and it's messy. It's not always perfect. It's not going to work for you in some ways and it's not going to work for your teenager in some ways. But remember the definition of boundaries by Prentice Hemphill is boundaries are the place at 
which I simultaneously love and respect you and me. Co-parenting with your ex, who you literally believe is the spawn of Satan, and I might too if I met them, is not about being how right you are about your way of parenting. It's about trying to find the messy middle for you and your teenager. In a very difficult time where they're already trying to figure out who they are, while they feel like they're trying to go between Russia and the Bahamas and they can barely make that assimilation on a weeknight, overnight, let alone figure out who they are. So where is the authentic place where you can parent from, where you feel respected and um, yeah, things feel workable for you? Irrelevant to how you're, sorry, Irrelevant to how your ex is parenting because your parenting doesn't need to be defined by how your ex is parenting because you don't need to compensate for what they're doing. So you find that messy middle where you feel loved and respected and your teenager can feel loved and respected and often days it'll feel like a giant gap because otherwise your teenager will always be the collateral damage in the middle And I know you're like, yeah, but Allie, when I, by the time I get my teenager back after they spent a week with my ex, they are mouthy, they're angry, they're, you know what? I might be too. I might be angry just because of living in two very, excuse me, different cultures. I might be really angry because I can't even figure out who I am because I'm constantly trying to figure out how to be loved and accepted in these wildly different cultures. I'd be angry too. So what if you just said to your teenager, tell me what it's like to be you right now. Tell me what it's like to be you and then you zip it. You zip it and just listen. And what if you said to your teenager, how can, what, what is the hardest part for you about going back and forth between my place and your other parent, your mom's or your dad's. What's the hardest part for you about that? Is there a way that I could make things a bit easier, make that transition a little bit easier for you? Now that doesn't mean just because your teenager's asking for it, doesn't mean you, you need to, you're ob obliged or obligated to do it, but you can certainly ask the question. Parent the way that you feel works best for you and your teenager. Not in a way that needs to make you diabolically different than your ex. Because now you're focused on being different or compensating from then. You're not focused on your relationship with your teenager. Okay? I'm not saying give in to everything. Hell no. If you've watched any of my videos, you'll know I'm a lot about boundaries have boundaries. But this particular situation really opened my eyes when I heard this woman talk about what it was like to be a teenager going back and forth between the homes, constantly seeking love and approval and having to assimilate and finding that so difficult and actually in the way of her figuring out even who she was. It really opened my eyes to that. And so that's my shift in perspective. And it might only shift your parenting 2%. I don't know. It might not shift your parenting at all, but it might shift your mindset. How can I be the parent that my teenager needs right now, knowing that adolescence is already a horribly hard time for them without constantly comparing myself or compensating for the way my ex parents? That's what I've got for you today. And I hope that this was helpful in some ways. Because it was parenting a teen already takes a lot of patience, a lot of patience. But I hope this perspective has opened up um, perhaps maybe a new conversation for you and your teenager. Because I also want you to remember this, that your teenagers, your teenager struggles because they can't, they probably feel like they can't tell you what they like and don't like about you but they can't tell you what they don't like about their other parent 
or you're going to get on board with that. So your key in this whole thing is to empathize and validate. Just empathize and validate. Do not create common enemy intimacy. And if you're like, yeah, Ali, well, this was all a good video, but you've never met my ex and they're a total narcissist and that's ridiculous. Um, maybe they are. I don't know. Um, but you can't control and change them. You cannot control and change them. So be the parent that feels authentically right for you and be willing to find the messy middle for your teenager so they are not the collateral damage in the middle. Again, this is not easy. It's not easy. And it might not be, ever. So keep doing the best you can. And you will get through it, likely, with a relationship, a meaningful relationship with your teenager. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you have any questions or comments, I would love if you post them below along with your insights when I will post them up on my Instagram, this video up on my Instagram, at Allie Payne. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Hit the subscribe button. You can catch me every Wednesday at 2 p.m. on TikTok. 2 p.m. Pacific, you can catch me here on Instagram at 11 a.m. Pacific every Thursday. And I post these videos on my YouTube channel at Ali Payne and my website is AliPayne.com. You can find tons of resources there under the Work With Me menu, programs or resources. If you wanna book a session with me, that's under the Work With Me menu. And if you hit the link in my bio, you will find very similar menus, Work With Me, programs or online resources. So thank you so much again. I wish you all a wonderful weekend and I will see you right here next week, 11 a.m. Pacific on Instagram. Bye, everybody.